Ago Ghana Afro TV presents Living Legend. Viewers, you are all welcome to Living Legends in memory of the divine drama that Ghana has ever produced. Kofi Ganaba. <laughs> Ganaba is a musician. The unique thing about Ganaba is that he is the first, he's the first son of a bitch to play from drums with his hands and his feet in the in, 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 in Ghanaian music history, you know. So that uh, somebody says somebody says about my place is he plays with more hands and feet than more than, than ordinary mortals are endowed with. <laughs> Dr. Kujo. He says, Ghana, Ghana Warren plays with more hands and feet than ordinary mortals are endowed with. Yeah. I'm the octopus. When I play drums, I become like an octopus. Uh, briefly, how would you like to describe Kofi Ganaba, who has been so close to you and uh, a childhood friend? But Kofi was my very good friend in our infancy. But as we grew up, I attended Accra Academy. He went to Achimata for training as uh, a teacher. But halfway he left and joined the late Age of Kansas, uh, press, city press. He left and went to Liberia as a disc jockey. His father, the late illustrious Richard Akwe, had him re repatriated. But because he was adventurous, he went back to Liberia. And from there, he went to America. And uh, started um, his young um, interest in music. He was a drummer at school, a very good drummer. And he joined Tempos, the first Tempos. It's there that is liking for music blossomed. <clears throat> At Achimota, when he was there, he could entertain the whole school on Friday evenings. And uh, you would think, because of his antics, that um, he was he wasn't interested in education, but he, he was an intelligent chap, very, very intelligent and very smart. Billy Eckstein, uh, an Afro-American singer, trumpeter, trumpeter and musician, band leader. Uh, in my youth, we were look-alikes. And this article said that the next time used to entertain at uh, Howard University, I think he, it was. And he would sing and people would go gaga over him and all that. And so he, he came to believe that his voice was his fortune and that's what he should do, sing. So he, he left college, but didn't finish it, and 
went to the music field and he became famous and great, one of the greatest Afro-American musicians uh, uh, of uh, my lifetime or of, of, the, of the millennium. Now, when I was at Ashimoto, we, we would have uh, entertainment nights and I would tap dance and sing and play drums and carry on and turn the whole college upside down, you know, masters and students alike. Well done, hey, who ha, hey, ha, guy, 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 hey, guy, hey, guy, hey, guy. So I also thought like Billy Eckstein, why waste my time in this goddamn school? I'm going to quit and go play my drums like Billy Eckstein quit to go and sing. And that's the truth. So I left, uh, I left college before I could finish with it. And I was bored stiff with the college regimen. You know, it was like uh, an army camp. And I, I can only take that for as long as I could take it. Then I, I got out. Ago Ghana! Afro TV presents Living Legend. Konimo, this is an order, it is not a request. Yeah. I can speak so many languages, so my patients feel comfortable with me. Ghana Bar is a combination of many, 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 many. My children are the of their camp people. It was my first book. Yes, I went to London to help to turn our Gold Coast office. Then it was into a high commission. I got this sucker, not from Ghana, but from Philadelphia. Yeah. People call me also some names as a result of my sporting life. I was a little adventurous. So on Monday when I saw the papers, I decided to quit football for good. Living Legends was brought to you by Afro TV. Ghana Bar is a combination of many, 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 many things. Talking about your dad, uh, Kofi Ganaba, memories back, how would you describe him? Well, when I grew up from school, my father was not here, he was in the States. And I went to a Jamestown Government Boys School. And when my father came back, I realized that I had a father who was a big time musician, so I, I, I didn't even realize it. So he got me into music and he taught me how to play the drums. And I was rehearsing with him. We played with police band and other um, groups, Uru dance band. You know, we were moving around. I was supporting him. And I was nicknamed the Little Thunder. So basically, me and my father, on the music level, we've been very good partners. I love him 100% for his music. He has done a lot of things for the world of music. Not only for Ghana, not only for Africa, for the world. I, I am more than a musician, and that makes me different. But musically, I love my father. He has inspired me to love music. And I believe that I can continue. And if the chance is given properly, I can do my best. Not Maybe not to be like my father, but be almost like him, musically. So this is the way I remember my father. On musical level, political, Journalism, it was very good. You know, constructive criticisms of everything. Whether you are part of him or you are against him, he tells his mind and that's about it. You see? So I think we've lost a great guy for the whole world, not only Ghana. Uh, the pictures on this wall are uh, pictures which trace my evolution uh, in life, right? And the, the first picture there, uh, titled Psalm 86, uh, is a pictorial version of my favorite psalm in the Bible, Psalm 86. I took that 
at uh, a place we call Hejomohi, down in the garden, down in the yard there, where I relax. Whenever I see this picture, it looks like I'm wondering what life is all about. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Briefly, how did you uh, meet Ganaba? Okay, um, I have to take this back to 1969 when I was playing in a band with some Achimoto schoolboys, a pop chain band, and Glenn Warren was among. So I used to go to Guy's house, um, or Ganaba's house, in Tesano to meet Glenn, and we used to rehearse there, and I wasn't allowed to meet the father at that time. So there was this mysterious man who was Glenn's father, and he was always beh behind closed doors, and there was a strong smell of um, scent or incense coming from the door. And Glenn told me that was his, f his father was a recluse, he was a mystic. So I never met him that time. Uh, and then uh, in 1973, I was writing a book with E.T. Mensah. So uh, we, we went to see Guy Warren. By that time, Guy had moved from Tesano because of the noise to Achimota, which was still fairly peaceful in those days, because he didn't like noise. So we went to the house, with, and I wanted to interview Guy because he was the drummer with the original tempos. In fact, at one time, I think he actually led the tempos for a year, he and jo Joe Kelly, before handing over to E.T. Mensa. And also I wanted to get the story of the tempos right, right because it, a lot of people believe the band was formed by E.T. Mensa, and it was actually formed by Adolf Doku and a white guy during the war and then it became Ghanaianized. Anyway, I don't want to go into the history of the tempos, but Guy was the first drummer, and he introduced the Afro-Cuban drums to the tempos. So when E.T. and I got to the house in Tesano, we were sacked. And a few weeks later, I got a call from E.T. saying, oh, Guy was so apologetic that he'd seen, he didn't recognize E.T. Mensa. He saw some white guy, didn't want to speak to anybody. Picture to the right of this poster is my favorite picture of my whole career, my life. Uh, it was taken by my daughter, Hosanna Maoko Ganaba. The reason why I like this picture is because it shows like I'm walking out of uh, I'm walking out of my life. I've come to the end of my life and I'm walking out of it. Uh, that's how I feel about that picture. It's, it's as if to say, well, I've done my little bit, now goodbye. That kind of a thing. You are still watching the special edition of Living Legends in memory of the divine drama Kofi Ganaba. Briefly, how would you describe him? Kofi Ganaba is really a divine drama. I met him personally at the National Theatre, presenting the African type of Handel Messiah. And boy, you must be there to see this part. It, he made me cry because I've heard I'm a, I'm a classic, a classic uh, uh, admirer, and I heard Handel Messiah in different tune. But the one this man presented was just too much. I think that day the angels dropped. The man was playing the front drum, from drum with his hand, his head, and his legs, and everything. And it was just beautiful. The man is really a legend. Ago Ghana! Afro TV presents Living Legend. Konimo, this is an order, it is not a request. Yeah. I can speak so many languages, so my patients feel comfortable with me. Ganaba is a combination of many, many, many. So on Monday, when I saw the papers, I decided to quit football for good. Living Legends was brought to you by Afro TV.
picture is titled Free South Africa. Uh, it was taken uh, during the time when I was performing a, a suite dedicated to Nelson Mandela, Desmond Tutu, Oliver Tambo, the great leaders of the South African Revolution. And the title of the suite, the drum suite, was Free South Africa. And it shows you Ganaba playing the African phantom from drums single-handedly. Now this is a gift. I like to tell people about this. It's a gift. Or ordinarily, the phantom from will be played by one man or maybe two, two different drums, two drummers. One drum, one drummer. The Atumpani drums will be played by another man and the Mpentema drum in the center will be played by another man. So you have one, two, three, four. Uh, and if there's an extra phantom from uh, around, that makes it, makes it five or six. One, two, three, four, five. It's a total of seven drums, seven drums played by one man, one man. It's never been done before in Ghanaian history. And it's a gift. <laughs>
In my career and lifetime, I have received many gifts uh, from people. And um, here are the, the, the two gifts which I treasure most. This was given to me for my 77th birthday by Vice President Aka, the late Vice President Aka, and the Winnie by Youth Choir. It was a bouquet of flowers with uh, a yellow ribbon, my favorite color. And I framed it as you see it now because I treasure it. By and by, I'll put it in a box. And uh, I mean, the, the Winnipeg Youth Choir is my favorite choir. It's everybody's favorite. They sing, they sing like a group of sirens. Presents Living Legend. Onimo, this is an order. It is not a request. Yeah. I can speak so many languages, so my patients feel comfortable with me. Ghana bar is a combination of many, many, many. So on Monday, when I saw the papers, I decided to quit the football for good. Living Legends was brought to you by Afro TV. And this is number two. Uh, a citation from the Art Critics and Reviewers Association of Ghana, ACRAG. Art Critics and Reviewers Association of Ghana. It's a flag star award, it's supposed to be therefore the highest award which this, this um, society or a group of musicians would confer on anybody. I treasured this. I have many certificates, but I treasured this because it was signed by my role model, Professor Kwabena in Katia. Professor Kwabena in Katia. The other day, I was telling somebody who asked me the question. If you were not Ganaba, <coughs> who, who would you like to be? And I said, Professor Kwabena Ketia. He's my role model. And he's a great Ghanaian. What, 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 what attracts me to this? is the fact that he's very self-effacing. He doesn't brag, he doesn't boast. He's very humble. And, um, and yet he knows so much. He knows the music inside and out. He can, he can play it, he can lecture on it, he can write books on it. He's a musicologist, an ethnologist, a culturalist, uh, you'll go on and on and on and 
I I knew Ganaba very well uh, as a creative artist might uh, myself working in a different area and as someone interested in collecting our own traditional music and telling so so we were on the same wavelength and so we were we had moments when the two of us just met uh, he would uh, you know, arrange for me to see, visit him at home and so forth and he was a quiet serene person you know very different from the turbulent person you see him on stage and so forth <laughs> Well, uh, the legacy I left was my music. Africa Speaks America Answers, that album, was my legacy. And that album, that album has sold a million copies worldwide. And one of the tunes in that album, um, That Happy Feeling, titled That Happy Feeling, or You Will Adon, or uh, my thanks to God. Da 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 a lot of musicians, they made albums and they used a tune here and there. And um, if you check my uh, name on the internet, you will see the evidence which supports what I'm saying. It's not mere bragging. That tune, uh, my thanks to God, has earned me more money than any other composition. It's become like a hymn. They play it in Germany like a hymn. I just got a royalty statement and they've started playing it regularly in England. It's going to catch on and spread. So my legacy, not necessarily to America, but to the world, it's my album, Africa Speaks, America Answers. When I was making that album, I had this thought in mind that if I made the album and stepped out of the studio into the street and got knocked down by a car, I would have done what I came into the world to do. So the album was very well spaced. All the numbers were played differently and all the numbers were, were uh, uh, little gems by themselves. Africa Speaks America Answers. That is my legacy to the world. Your last words in memory of Kofi Ganaba. A big man has gone, my big friend has gone. And as I'm talking to you, I'm shaking. Because I didn't, though he grew up, you know, he was an old man, but full of grace. It was full of everything, you know. So I'm saddened. So all what I can say is uh, my good friend, Ajiman Jeu, my he said here, rest in peace. Folks, let his soul rest in perfect peace. And on that note, I would like to sign up to this edition of the program Living Legends in memory of the divine drama. He is the only, the only, and I repeat, the only divine drama Ghana has ever produced. Living 
Legends was brought to you by Afro TV.